Yes, yes, yes. I am here in Samoa, and today I found myself in a tiny little village called Savaya. What brings people to Savaya is their marine protected area, an amazing giant clam reserve. So I guess that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Giant clams, the dangers they face, the major role they play in the health of coral reefs, and the sort of benefits they can bring to the communities which try to conserve them. Giant clams, as the name suggests, are the biggest in the clam family. And here in the reserve, there are four different species of them. Putting that sort of size into context, the biggest one found usually grow up to about 1.2 meters length and can weigh up to 200 kilograms. That's ridiculous. So when you get to Savaya, you head towards the water, pay the woman at the hut, don your snorkeling gear and get out into the water. And about 50 meters away, you've got a beautiful coral garden, probably with more giant clams than I've ever seen before. It's amazing. What makes these guys so beautiful and distinctive and people love them so much is this amazingly colored and decorative muscles which sort of line the outer edge of the shell like lips. And here they've got clams of all different colors and sizes from the tiny little ones protected in cages from predators all the way up to the big boys which can live for up to 100 years. Unfortunately, encountering these guys in the wild is an increasingly rare sight and we're to blame for this through overfishing. They're muscular adductors which wrap around the shell helping it to open and close to protect it from predators are prized as a delicacy in so many countries and their shells are used as decorations in the ornamental trade. What makes it worse, they're especially vulnerable to losing numbers because they reach sexual maturity at a really late age and their spawning strategy means that for fertilization to have the best chance of occurring, there must be a sufficient number of spawning individuals in a certain area to avoid population collapse. And with us taking them out for food and for decorations, a lot of the time there just aren't these numbers. So. Why should we have any interest in conserving giant clams? Well, these guys, because of how old they are, are a critical barometer in coral reef health. And when these guys start to disappear in a natural environment, it's a time to let scientists know, okay, we should start having a look at this reef anyway. And these guys themselves also play a critical role in the health of coral reef ecosystems, and especially in the fossilized reefs like we find here. They act as a food source for around 76 different marine animals, through their tissues and their discharges. Their big shell made of calcium carbonate essentially acts as another reef building coral and also acts as a substrata surface for other marine animals and corals alike. So another good one is these guys grow, like most reef building corals, through symbiosis with zoanthellae. But they can also grow through filter feeding which is basically they consume the disused inorganic carbon in the water column and process that. And this filter feeding essentially can act to prevent algal blooms and eutrophication, which as I spoke about in the last video, is a massive trigger for the outbreak of crown of thorn starfish as well. So that's really good. Oh, and if this wasn't good enough already, these guys can actually walk across the reef. That's ridiculous. They're beautiful, they play a critical ecosystem functioning, and they can do cool stuff like walk. What's not to love and want to protect about these guys? Back to Savaya, and the restocking that's done here, the local says has done wonders for ensuring the coral reef health and all the ecological benefits that come along with this. And I'm sure that the benefits aren't just limited to this area alone but the ability for the clams to thrive and spawn in peace means that when they do spawn, these benefits will accrue all over the island and beyond. I guess it's also important to mention that roping off an area for conservation like this and persuading people to do it isn't always an easy thing to do, especially when it's only potentially the ecological benefits which they'll see. But as I mentioned before, this place is a real draw for tourists and apparently can bring in about £100 a day for the community. And this all comes together for the community and at the end of the year is spent on giving one person from each class at school the chance to go get a better and further education. Multiple benefits! So this has been a pretty beautiful story I think of community-based conservation optimism. 
both from ecological benefit and for those for the community. And I hope it's given you guys a newfound love and respect for these giant clams and may mean that you'll go and check them out and check out these brilliant sort of community initiatives into the future. Ramblings out. And to keep up to date with everything, make sure you give all of these a follow.